the American Dietetics Association was founded back in 1917 by the same group of people, these Seventh-day Adventists, who again came into that with this belief that we shouldn't be eating meat. And so Whoa, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't know that. Seven-day Adventists started this whole trend of the crap we're eating today. John Harvey Kellogg messed up the American diet. Some of you guys may be familiar with him with the name Kellogg should I remind you of something called Kellogg Cereal, which he was the eponymous founder of that particular cereal company. Let's look at some of his eccentricities. He was quite a weird guy. He was into some really weird stuff. Let's start about a little bit about his background. So Kellogg and his family were Seventh-day Adventists. They had moved to Battle Creek. Um, this YouTuber's name is Sean Baker, uh, MD, and uh, he is carnivore. All right. Um, he eats all... Um, Basically, if it comes from an animal, he eats it. It is something I'm leaning into. I'm doing a slow elimin elimination diet where right now I'm eliminating bread and chips. And then two weeks from now, I have to eliminate cereal. And what else do I got to eliminate? Oh, it'll be just cereal. Just cereal. We keep buying bags of it for our kids in bulk. Michigan back in 1856. Now, Battle Creek in Michigan at the time was kind of the Mecca, you know, the Vatican, if you will, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is where all the, the major religious thought leaders for that particular religion resided. And one person whose name was Ellen G. White, who was a prophetess, you know, she, she, she claimed to have heard the word of God and, and, you know, she saw visions. God apparently told her that he didn't want us eating meat. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know that, that, that um, she uh, got visions from God saying to not eat meat. In fact, since we're on that subject, this is in regards to eating meat and vegetables. It says, except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant to their own master? Servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Okay, all right. So why do I say this? One person's going to eat meat. Another person's going to eat just vegetables. If you have, a, you can have a vegan Christian, by the way. They exist. That is okay. Is veganism good for them? It depends on their body and it depends on what kind of vegan stuff they're eating. I'm going to be honest with you because the American diet sucks. It does not matter which way you spin it. And so she, but this is sinful. This is not okay. You don't just tell people, you don't condemn someone for eating meat. You don't condemn someone from eating vegetables either, like we said, but this is wrong. Uh, took some inspiration from one of the quotes of the Bible, verse 129, and it apparently says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. Cheeseburger said you should watch uh, Santa Cruz uh, paleo. I get my whey and beef protein isolate from him. 100% grass fed, no hormones or antibiotics. I will be on my way to be doing things like that for sure. But take a look at Genesis 129 here. It shall be for meat. Okay. Th this... Let, let, let's be real here, because we can go to Genesis. God's covenant with Noah. Look at this. God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Fear and dread of you will fall on the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and on every creature that moves along the ground and on all the, uh, the fish in the sea. They are given into your hands. This is a new covenant. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. This is Genesis 9. This is after the flood. Genesis 129 is before the flood. By the way, this is how cult leaders control people. She did not hear from God. It was the devil that twisted verses of the Bible to Jesus in the wilderness. And it was Jesus being the word made flesh who looked at him and rebuked him with the verses in context. Never mind that the Bible is full of references to eating meat and, and the benefits of eating meat. And yeah. So on and so forth. There, there are hundreds of other references out there. Some of you biblical scholars can probably allude to that. But, but anyway, she saw that one verse and decided, well, all, all of us should be vegetarian, basically. And so this entire religion was kind of built upon abstinence, you know, abstaining from things. Anything pleasurable, whether it's dancing or drinking coffee or pickled food. Spicy condiments, fried food, tea, pickled foods, coffee, dancing. 
Ah. I wonder if the guys in the movie Footloose were actually seven-day adventures. <laughs> or tea or fried food or spicy condiments or wearing a wig or a tight dress or masturbating or, God forbid, sex outside of marriage. Well, I mean, uh, we're not going to... That's, that's not for the stream. You know, those things were all completely verboten. Back when John uh, Harvey Kellogg was about 12, 13 years old, Ellen uh, noticed him and noticed he was seemed to be very, very... Uh, eager to help and be part of this and so she offered him a position as one of the church's apprentices and so by the time he was 16 he was the editor for their health reform magazine and so they continued to work with him and actually sent him to medical school and so when he got back they set up the battle creek sanitarium so this you know started out just as initially as kind of a hospital thing but it then became this luxury uh, grand hotel and spa for where they, they sort of uh, elaborated all their other schemes that happened and so kellogg was was quite you know passionate about his beliefs but he was also a bit of an inventor and had some very weird ideas and so one of the ideas that he had was that you know he was kind of obsessed with the colon for some reason he felt like you needed to keep it clean at all times and and, and remove impurities from that and so he had several ways to do it and one was something called the vibratory chair and so this was a chair that would shake you around basically shake the poop out of you it also yeah that's weird so in theory, it was supposed to help with headaches. So basically you would just violently shake until I guess you defecated or something like that. Here's something that many of you don't know. He was one of the first to originally describe and invent. What in the KFC am I looking at? Okay. Something called protose, which was one of the first fake meats. So this is before Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. This is something way back in the day. And so it was a mash of wheat gluten, grains, peanut butter, and he also put iron filings in there to, to, to keep up the iron content. So if you can imagine eating that stuff, it must have been just completely disgusting. Another thing he invented was the, the so-called percussion. It's pretty disgusting now, honestly. Percussive machine or the percussion mas machine. And the, so this machine was designed to sit there and punch you in the stomach, you know, a little, little robot, mo you know, motorized machine that hits you in the stomach over and over again. And this was supposed to break down the fat and make you to, you know, become thinner. So, you know, people that were a little overweight back in the time would sit there and get their stomach pounded on. So I guess if nothing else, it would discourage you from being fat because you're like, I don't want to get hit in the stomach over and over again. Now, another thing he was, again, he was well ahead of his time. So you guys have heard of the shake weight, this, this sort of scam dumbbell that they sell these internet marketers sell you well he basically invented a version of this in 1905 so it was basically for someone who was so afraid of sexual stimulation didn't want to he had a lot of vibration devices in there so i don't know if he had some sort of repressed stuff going on now the last one which it's possible which i think is quite funny is he invented the enema machine now apparently again like i said he was obsessed with cleaning out his colon and so he basically administered himself daily enemas he said well if it's helped you know, it's interesting because vegans um, get pretty obsessed with uh, cleansing themselves as well, even though the body has organs that cleanse the body naturally. Uh, there are things that are natural diuretics that you can actually add to your diet. Diet is supposed to be medicine. We're just so far from that in the West. It's not even funny. Helping me, why not bring it to the public? So he invented this machine that apparently could run through 25 gallons of liquid in and out of your colon within 60 seconds. So that's a that's a hell of a, <laughs> that's a pretty big flood going on. Dude, that's like, do you, you guys are, are aware of um, those old Walmart toilets where you hit flush when if you were finished you going number two and you had to like almost jump out of the way because the the backsplash it was like a swirly kind of backsplash and it was very violating all that out there what he's most famously known for is inventing breakfast cereal the typical breakfast in the late 1800s would have been some sort of animal product maybe it's eggs some kind of meat maybe some potatoes fried in lard or something like that and he felt that that was, that certainly wasn't in keeping with the, the, the religious beliefs. And it wasn't in keeping with Ellen G. White's, you know, uh, vision from God that we should all be. Ellen G. White, I need to look her up. Co-founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Whoa, I didn't know she was the co-founder of the Seventh-day Adventist. Who gets obsessed with freaking, oh, you can't eat meat. That's what God told her, you can't eat meat. Even though in Genesis chapter 9, um, God gave the animals over. Before Genesis chapter 9, before the flood, it was. A vegan diet it wasn't until after the flood that we could eat meat nothing's changed we can still eat meat being a vegetarian diet so he felt also that these foods led to increased libido the first night after i had that salmon i had a wet dream i hadn't ejaculated in months and sexualization and masturbation and lust and he didn't want that and so he found that eating bland food 
you know, was, was the key to that. And so he invented cereal. And so he had all these different ways that he tried. And he finally found out that if he could toast, you know, corn and, you know, and wheat and turn them into flakes, that was what he fed people for cereal. And so what it was, it worked. It killed libido. <laughs> so it worked. It did its job. But it was also something that was very inflammatory to the gut. Uh, it was, you know, something that, that, you know, obviously drove insulin and glucose up quite well. And so today, even today, there are hundreds of millions of people that start off every day with some version of Kellogg's bland gruel to start their day. Now that starts them off usually in a way in which they are often very hungry afterwards. Uh, I'm starving after a bowl of cereal. It's why I prefer to add protein to my cereal. Their libido most change the milk, add protein powder to the milk, blend it up in like a little um, a shake blender or whatever, you know, whatever you got, you know, use definitely. But you get some protein in there somewhere, it'll help like a lot. Likely, and it sets them up on a path of uh, poor eating habits and so on and so forth. So, so Kellogg's again, one of the early kind of vegan mindset guys, you know, I think his brain was a little bit addled from, from some of the uh, ideology he was exposed to has helped to set the narrative for nutrition for the entire, you know, 20th century. Uh, with, with some of his stuff. And so, again, for you guys who don't know that, the American Dietetics Association was founded back in 1917 by the same group of people, these Seventh-day Adventists, who, again, came into that with this belief that we shouldn't be eating meat. And so Whoa, okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't know that. Seven-day Adventists started this whole trend of the of the crap we're eating today from the very beginning nutrition science has, has been about kind of promoting plant-based diets okay with a religious ideology attached and that still still very much is present today and for you guys who don't know that the american dietetics Asso american dietetic association founded in 1917 academy is committed to improving the nation's health and advancing the profession of dietetics through research education and advocacy was co-founded by lena Cooper. Let's look up Lena Cooper. Lena Cooper was an American dietitian. What was her religion? Seventh day Adventist. So they are a religious cult and they've been screwing with our food. Once again, referring to Genesis chapter 9, we are allowed to eat meat.